Martin Luther King Day 2010 at Marcus Bookstore on Fillmore. A day on rather than a day off. Carlos Levexier and his band of AmeriCorps public allies took to the streets, initiating book clubs around the San Francisco community, aimed at closing the academic achievement gap of kids K-12 in San Francisco's lagging public school system. The group moved to empower parents in partnership to raise the reading performance levels of their school-aged children. Sheree McClendon, and um, I'm a single mother. I have a four-year-old son. I would try to spend more time here with my son and read him books and show him that um, this is a place that he needs to be because it's a place I need to be. There's a lack. There's a lack of education. And I think there's a gap between that. There's like huge disparities in information, and and it used to be, and you're seeing it now with the internet, that where you're all connected. You can think, what was it before? You know what I mean? What was it before the internet where these pockets of people knew this and these pockets? And, 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 it, and it's, it's starting to be embarrassing for institutions because now all of a sudden it's really showing what was going on. You know, the literacy initiative that Marcus Books has is like a really great opportunity not to just be like another school oriented thing but also to be something that um, enhances what is learned in school and what um, like how how literacy and things that you do in school relates to your everyday life and, and just how you how you want to like grow as a person so in San Francisco it just passed that it's mandatory for kids to be on this angry day track this is making me think a little bit of what you've talked about, Carlos, in regards to the book list and what the book list is. Do families even know that it's out there, that there is a reading list for kids in their various age groups and age levels and spreading the word about that? Because I think a lot of times, like, even in rural areas, there were certain things that the school, like, didn't tell us about. Didn't tell us about SATs or how to prep for them or what those requirements were when going to college. And a lot of kids' families didn't know that and weren't telling them. So, yeah. so how parts of the community yeah, it's, it's true a lot, and that's that's what I guess is really going to be important in these book clubs is that the parents are as involved as the kids because, uh, like with the A through G, if your parent at home doesn't know that you need to be in these certain classes, then they can't advocate. Like, a lot of kids basically navigate by themselves, even if they have parents, because they might have moms who work two jobs or, like, you know, they, they're in a single family home, and if the mom, the parents don't know, and the kids try to navigate it by themselves, they kind of end up like slipping through the cracks. So I think it's really important that parents get just as involved in these type of book clubs as their kids so that they can be on the same page. But I'm really excited about what you are all doing, and I have only just heard about Public Allies today, and I'm thrilled to hear that you're working also with those organizations to spread the word about you know, what they're doing and campaign and build this literacy program. That's awesome. It's not, you know, Guys, thank you so much for the day. It was really a great day. Um, I want to introduce everybody to uh, Dr. Ray Richardson, the founder of Marcus Books, my husband. And, um, and now we can you know, wrap up the day with you know, a discussion that you might want to have at this point. I'd like to know what they learned. <laughs> what did you learn? What did you learn today is the question. Yes. Yeah. I finally found a place in the Bay Area that is as passionate about uh, black books and black literature as I am. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. <laughs> Now that you found it, well. Oh, I'm going to buy some. <laughs> <laughs> what is what did you learn? Did you learn something? Yes. Yeah. It was more of just a reinforcement of what I already knew is that um, young black children in the community care about education just as much as I believe that they do and that I do and that it's all about making it catering it to what can be applicable to them. <laughs> if I went back around one time and said, you know, what 
book do you remember that really, your favorite book that really had a big impression on you? Remember? Something I think is cool um, about, about how we read growing up is you had all these books that were in series, and I guess, like looking back on it, um, like it was helpful because they set the stage for something and then you just got it over and over and over again in different forms. So like the boxcar children yeah, were a I lot of that fun. One. That was fun. Um, and um, the babysitters club too. Yeah. Okay. Roll Doll is similar in that way too. I mean, his books are similar. It's not the same setting, but mm. the Twix, the BFG, James and the Giant Peach. And they're very creative. Like you really get, I always felt like really in my imagination when, when we read them. and. When they first came out with a movie uh, based on one of Roald Dahl books, Roald Dahl's books, I remember being very disappointed yeah. because it went really? against everything I had imagined. Yeah. Which because James he, and the Giant Peach? Um, I that and Matilda. Matilda. And with both of those, oh, I Matilda. because of the way he writes, it like provokes all of these ideas in your mind of what he's talking about and what it looks like. So much so that to see a movie was like upsetting because <laughs> it was contrary to what I had imagined. I think one book like that really I always think about that I read I was like a I just I was like a bookworm like I would be the kid with the biggest book like at, and I remember when I was like in the sixth or seventh grade I read Queen by Alex Haley and like all the other kids were reading like Roald Dahl and I read Queen and they were like what and it was like huge it was like 600 pages or something and I just that's true I think they just passed a uh, resolution mm -hmm. to make the everybody A, mm -hmm. a through G mm -hmm. To make everybody on an A through G track, exactly. That's just like this year, <laughs> and I, I was like, I couldn't believe that because I thought that that throughout California that that was required, and so to find out in San Francisco that it wasn't, and that people had to fight to get their kids prepared to go to college, like that just didn't make any sense to me. Like it just, yeah. so yeah, that's something that I found really interesting, and it has kind of taken my. I, I thought I wanted to go into law, but I've kind of mm. deferred into going into education because it's just that. Stuff like that just really makes me feel like somebody needs to be trying to fight harder for kids to be able to be on the same playing field. And obviously, what you guys are doing with the book clubs is something that's really going to affect that. And so I think a lot of people need to be pushing that forward. All right. Even within your own language, sometimes you do not understand the word. Um, and sometimes groups within the language have their own language. Uh, for instance, among black people, um, and I think we've made more impact on the language than anybody else, frankly, um, to say bad and make it negative. It seems to me comes out of our own unique history in this country. So you you inverse the meaning of the word. You mean, you mean to make it And positive. so instead of bad being negative, bad becomes positive. You know, the sister will look at some shoes and say, "Those are some bad." <laughs> and you know, if she's really streetwise, she says, "MFs." <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I love the city. Um, I'm not sure there's any other place I would rather be than in San Francisco. It's a great, great challenging city. And flexible enough to let you do this. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Ray. Thank you. Um, Last thing I'd like to just do uh, is um, let Greg, who's uh, head of the, the Carlton B. Goodlett Institute, and, and uh, Carlton B. Goodlett Institute is, uh, is uh, going to be sponsoring, you know, the Scholar Book Clubs, fiscal sponsoring. Thank you so much on behalf of <coughs> Marcus Bookstore, as well as the Carlton B. Goodlett Institute. We are incredibly pleased to have all of you with us today. So again, thank you so much.